Welcome again guys, Betts here. We're going to do another patch rundown, this time for patch 5.8. It's a lot of exciting changes this patch and I'm just going to get right into it. The first change or set of changes is to the way QuickCast or SmartCast works uh, with concerns to range indicators, but if you guys really want to read this and get a good feel of it, I would, I would do it yourself. Um, I will put a link for the patch notes in the description below. The one I'm going to talk about most is this one right here. I know everyone has dealt with this problem where you're in the middle of a fight or you're doing something and you accidentally click on your mini map or use a skill on your mini map and it kind of moves you or uses that ability in a random direction that you didn't want to do. You, you didn't want to use it in the first place. So this uh, allows you to disable that so you don't have to run that problem. So if you accidentally click on the bottom right of your screen or bottom left, depending on where your minimap is, you won't run into that problem. So I think this is a really good change and I'm glad it finally got into the game. The next change is a complete rework to Rise and this is probably what I'm going to talk about most uh, throughout this whole patch rundown, so uh, bear with me. The first change is to his base mana regen, 6 to 5. Seems like a nerf, but if you really think about it in the sense that uh, the mana cost for his Q is reduced uh, early levels and even at max rank, it's actually not that big of a deal. So one one mana regen nerf early game. And it doesn't really matter since uh, the base mana regen stack growth has increased by 0.2. So after 5 levels, you will be at the same mana regen. So it's just this very early laning is going to be kind of weaker. Uh, his armor growth stat is actually also weaker. So this is actually painful in this especially because I don't think Frozen Heart will be as good on him as it used to be. And that has to do with how his ult is going to work and like other things uh, like his Q and mana ratios are going to be weaker now. So this armor stat nerf is actually going to hurt quite a lot. And we'll just do quick calculation. So 0.9 for each level. That's how, how much the loss is times 18. So at level 18, he'll have 16 less armor, 16.2 if you want to be very technical. Uh, so that will hurt him, uh, especially since he won't be able to... He can build Frozen Heart. I'm not going to say he won't. Uh, it's still a possibility since he does have mana ratios. And the armor and the aura are still very good, especially if you don't have another Frozen Heart carrier in the, the team. So, But it's going to make him weaker in the late game in that sense. Arcane Mastery as passive has been changed. So before, it used to reduce the cooldown of all your abilities by one second each time you use an ability. And this made his consistent damage quite high. Now it acts a little differently. So he gets a stack of Arcane Mastery, they call it, for 12 seconds. And at 5 stacks, his abilities uh, are reduced in cooldown by the cooldown of Overload. So the cooldown of Overload has been changed to 4 seconds at base. But it also, so this, this benefit gets reduced as you get, get more cooldown reduction. So uh, later on in the game, as you're... Q goes down to 3 second cooldown, maybe even lower, depending on how much cooldown reduction you have. It'll reduce your cooldown redu cooldown of your spells less as time goes on. That seems kind of bad, but you, actually you have to think about it in the context that your abilities are going to be lower cooldown overall, so it's not that big of a deal. Just to make it him less overbearing in the late game, because if you actually calculate all of them together, it's going to be really ridiculous how, how low his cooldowns are going to be and how annoying he's going to be, so I think that's a good change. It also gives him a shield at 5 stacks, so um, this we'll talk about later, the, the duration of the five st uh, the shield will increase based on how many ranks of his ultimate he has. So a, it's a 20 damage shield plus 5 per level, so just to give you an idea, 20, actually no, clear that, 5 times 18 plus 20. So about 110 at level 18, that's just the base, plus the 8% max uh, mana. Let's say, just uh, just to be conservative, 2500 mana, depending on what items you get on Rise. I think AP will be a little better, so this will be around how much? Maybe 3000, I have to do the math again. 3000 is what I usually saw it at, at in the late game. But let's just use 2500 to be conservative, depending on what items you get. Times 0 0.08 for 8%. So 200 plus... 110 from the base 310 every single time you use five abilities that's pretty good 
Uh, it might not seem like a big deal, but over time it's going to add up. And along with the spell vamp, it's going to make him more tanky in the sense that he's going to be not, not taking more damage, but getting back more health and uh, shielding it. So in that sense, it will be quite powerful. So, I don't know, I like the change. I think it's very interesting. Uh, makes him more interactive, uh, along with the, the changes to his Q, which we will talk about. Q overload uh, no longer gives him cooldown reduction. That might seem like a pretty big nerf because t he really scales off cooldown reduction. Uh, he used to get 10% cooldown reduction from Q at max level. But now his cooldown reduction has been moved to his ultimate. It's actually, in my opinion, much more powerful. It's very powerful. It's... I think a little too powerful. Odds. We just need to see how Rise plays out, but I think it's going to be extremely strong. Uh, it is now a skill shot. Uh, apparently every Q in the game is going to be a skill shot at one point in the game, but that's just a joke. Uh, it also has a width. 50 is a pretty narrow width uh, compared to some skill shots, but I think it'll be fine. Um, it just depends on how fast the the target is moving and how fast the missile speed is. Uh, if it's anywhere near as fast as it was before, I think it will be fine. Uh, you might need to have a little setup for some of these things. So like a, uh, a rune prison will probably work into his uh, damage uh, damage over time kind of uh, rotation. The range of it is much higher. So that's a 275 damage buff uh, just to compensate for the fact that it is a skill shot. It's very nice, uh, allows him to farm from range, along with the, the mana reduction of his Q. It's actually very good. Uh, this will actually allow you to stack tier much quicker than you used to be able to do. Uh, mainly because you would actually deplete your mana. You would get a tier maybe early game if you were doing well, and then you would start stacking it. But if you want to stack it as fast as you want to actually stack it, uh, it actually depletes your mana very quickly. So that was the problem, but this actually makes it a little easier. So it's a nice buff. The next change is the buff to his base damage. Uh, just a comparison, this is 5 more damage than Ryze used to have on his, uh, his Q before the nerfs, back when he was played at Worlds. So let's just look to confirm, because I already have it open. Right here, so 60 to 160 is how it's scaled. Now it's 65 to 165, so it's slight buff to it. But uh, keep in mind that it's a skill shot, so it's harder to land. So we'll just have to keep that in mind. Also, the mana mana scaling to it has been nerfed, especially at lower levels. So this makes it so Rise is weaker in the early game as a harasser. Uh, he's already weak because it's a skill shot and you can't just hit it over creeps and like absolutely decimate melee champions. But this makes him a little weaker just in terms of damage if you stack mana. So this like Frozen Heart doesn't become as effective uh, in that sense. While at the same time, they buffed his AP ratio. It isn't that huge of a buff, but you have to understand that Ryze has very quick uh, cooldowns. It's very, very low cooldowns. So this is actually more than just a 0.15 damage uh, buff uh, to ZP ratio. It might be like 0.3 or uh, 0.45 because of how fast he does it. You have to think about that with low cooldown abilities. Uh, Rune Prison has become more of a... Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, an increase into his into the cooldown of his Q, but you also have to think about how much CDR he gets with his uh, ultimate. So this is actually not a nerf, it's just like to compensate. It will be roughly roughly the same or a little lower at level 16. So keep that in mind. So Rune Prison has become more of a utility ability in my opinion than a damage ability. It was a good utility ability against single target single targets uh, before, but now it's even weaker. Uh, slightly stronger level one doesn't mean anything. Uh, that actually, actually, that might mean something because you're gonna keep it at level one for a while. If I, if he's gonna be built the way I think he's gonna be built, and uh, in terms of skill order, uh, weaker in the later game, also weaker in terms of mana and AP ratio. So everything about it is weaker in terms of damage. I don't think this is gonna be maxed first, in my opinion. Uh, I, th I don't think you should max it. Uh, I think you should use it for the utility. Maybe a couple points just to increase the the root duration. But besides that, I don't think this is going to be maxed second. Uh, I think it's going to be maxed third. Or actually fourth, since your ultimate is obviously in there. But you understand. Spell flux has been changed to look a little different and react a little differently. It used to be a projectile that would bounce from 
one target to the next and it would reduce all their magic resist it still reduces their magic resist the way but the way it bounces and hits an aoe is different kind of radiates out and i will put the video or the the article in the description below and you guys can see exactly what i mean it's it's a little weird but uh you, you'll see another thing to look at when we're when talking about spell flux is the damage I, i'm not 100 percent sure but we'll look it up Let's see, let's see, let's see. Spell flux right here, okay. Uh, so they didn't sh show the actual changes to the damage, which I didn't like. Let's, let me check. Okay, so this is the old one. Okay, so uh, it scales more with ability power, less with mana now, I think is what they did. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so let's just look at right here, because they don't have the actual changes there. Uh, base damage reduced to 114 compared to 130. It used to be that. Uh, 30% from 35%. So the damage is reduced in that sense. The mana ratio is increased though. So, hmm. This makes me think that if you want AoE damage, you want to hit more mana items. Because look at the damage potential at level. Look at this. This is, this is huge. 4, 5, 6 damage potential. Uh, 120 AP ratio on a very low, low cooldown. This is actually a seven second cooldown compared to what it was before. So they didn't put the the changes. I don't usually they did. Like you see how they have the previous numbers. They don't have that here. But really, the way it works is a little different. So I have to see it used uh like in a team fight and just like use it constantly to understand how it works. But it doesn't balance like it used to. So which I'm kind of confused. So we'll see. Uh, magic resistance reduction is actually better overall. It's weaker in the early game because of how magic resistance is lower just generally. So percentage resistance uh, decreases and like penetration is worse in the early game. In the late game, this would be much better. So this this twelve percent can uh, go uh, stack up to three times. So think about it: three six percent magic resistance reduction. Very good. I don't think he'll need a void void unless. Maybe if you're the only magic damage dealer or they have a lot of MR or something along those lines, uh, you might need a void, but it would just like make it even stronger. He, he doesn't need it now because of the percentage magic resistance reduction, but it's just something to look at. Uh, it's stronger overall in this sense. So his E will be max second in my opinion. The W strength is not enough to warrant maxing it second. So I think this will be the new thing to do. Maybe even first. I doubt it, since Q is just such a good farming tool and consistent damage uh, ability. But we'll see. It, the the, the mid-game damage potential of this is really high. So we have to look at this uh, as time goes on. Okay, his ultimate has also been buffed. Uh, the cooldown has been nerfed at level 1. So that is kind of a, kind of a pain, but... Uh, these are actually the actual numbers that you have to look at since uh, these are just the flat flat changes. But since it also gives him CDR along with it, where is it? So 10%, 20%, 30% CDR. I just did the calculations myself, so you guys don't have to worry about it. These are the actual values for all of his abilities at uh, level 6, 11, and 16. Uh, if you guys want me to zoom in or something like that, I will do that. I'll actually zoom in in the video. So you guys can see it for a little bit, but these are the actual values. So these are actually lower than it actually appears. And these are only values with just this flat resist, uh, sorry, the flat uh, cooldown reduction just from the ultimate. So I didn't include masteries and runes that you might actually include. So uh, it might be even lower. So keep that in mind. So these aren't exactly the most, the best indicator of how strong his ultimate actually is now, which I think is going to be very powerful. Uh, it also, the, the duration has been nerfed slightly. It won't mean that much. Uh, it does hurt him slightly, but one second, come on, let's, let's be honest, it isn't going to make or break anything. Uh, I think his ultimate is going to be up more often now, so I don't think it will be that big of a deal. Um, I think he will be able, like, if you look at these values again, one more time. I'll zoom in if you need it. Um like 28 seconds plus his passive this will be up twice in a team fight maybe even three times if it's a long team fight so just keep that in mind so this is only base i think uh most people will probably get some 
runes or masteries, probably masteries. Uh, I think some people will go like the 9021 route to get to 10% CDR. So you have 40% CDR at level 16. This will be even lower, so keep that in mind. Um, it's very powerful in my opinion. I think he's going to be a little too powerful. We'll see. Uh, we have to see it in practice, but there's only one way to tell, so we have to wait. Uh, it also increases the duration of his arcane mastery, so the shield lasts a little longer. Very nice. It's actually quite long for how long the shield lasts. So it's very strong, though. I think he might be nerfed. Uh, it's too hard to tell, but I, that's what I think. Okay, so that was kind of long, but we'll move on right now, guys. Ari, so Charm used to stop unstoppable effects for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's the way uh, it was coded as a crowd control. But Unstoppable Force, Malphite's ult, Onslaught of Shadows, Hecarim's ult, and Assault and Battery, Vi's ult all are, are all supposed to be unstoppable. Apparently that wasn't the case, so I'm glad this was changed. Uh, I don't think that should have ever been the case. Okay, bar changes. I, I actually didn't like the bar changes last patch. I take that back. I don't like, I didn't like some of the changes last patch. Uh, mainly the damage changes to his Q, but now that I think about it again, I sort of understand it because it's only damage ability, but I think these kind of changes are a little better, uh, give more utility and usability uh, to him. So Chimes will avoid spawning in enemy jungle before 5 minutes because you're not going to go in the enemy jungle before 5 minutes unless you're invading uh, with multiple people, so let's just keep that in mind. Uh, this is just something that shouldn't, shouldn't have been the case. Uh, it makes it easier to get Chimes in the laning phase. And uh, you don't have to roam as far out and into dangerous areas to get chimes. So that's nice. This is also nice because it helps them s the, the chime experience scale. Because 25 XP might be decent in the early game. I have to, I'm not 100% sure. I think you need 400 experience from level 1 to 2. So you need quite a lot. Uh, this is actually, I think, kind of weak in the early game. But it's just some extra experience. So while you're not in lane, you'll still get it from chimes. It'll be even better now, so. It might be a decent amount uh, after a few, I don't know, like 20 minutes, but I still think this is kind of low, but whatever. I guess it's just to incentivize them to roam a little bit more. And speaking of roaming, uh, Blitzcrank has gotten some love after the butchering they did to his W last patch. I understand what they wanted to do last patch with his W and making it risk-reward, but when you actually look at it uh, and how it, like, performed in game uh it was it was awful uh, there's no way around that uh, it gave you a very it gave you a good movement speed buff for a very short duration uh maybe like the first second and then after the first second it gave you a much lower much lower speed and then after two seconds it basically went away uh between the third and fifth second it would go down maybe a few points, so it would be very minuscule difference. So it would just have like a huge cutoff, uh, and that really hurt him because like it would only be two seconds of s sorta good speed, and then it would just be nothing, and then you'd be slowed. So it was overall really bad to use, and in a lot of cases you would actually travel the same distance over the whole duration. So it, and then you would get slowed at the end and be in a really bad position. So this makes it a little better. I need to see it still because I don't want to. Because, I don't know, sometimes they get it wrong twice in a row, but I think this will be better overall. Overdrive's movement speed cannot decay below 10%. It was like at, in the single digits at like 3 and 4 and 5 seconds uh, before, so this is good. 10% uh, is actually a decent movement speed, uh, and that will always be the lowest point, so I like that. Caitlyn's traps are more visible in Brush, so I don't completely understand this one. Uh, so what they're trying to do is you should be ensnaring enemies by exploiting their habits, not their inability to see. Um, this is, I'm guessing, for people who don't know how to play against Caitlyn, you should be very careful about going into a brush when there's a Caitlyn on the other team because of the Yordle Snap Traps. But I guess they're just making it easier for them. Uh, I don't think this was needed, but whatever. Um, Caitlyn's actually kind of in a, in, I think, an okay spot. Um, if she can get past her mid-game weaknesses, but that's tough. Uh, that's that's the problem. Caitlyn has that really weak mid-game. It has a decent late game with her siege potential and her long range, 
But, uh, yeah, I don't think it was needed. Whatever, though. Um, not the biggest deal. Dr. Mundo, uh, Q refunds its cost on kill, passive and R tooltips for cleaner. So, this is a nice change. I'm not going to talk about the tooltip changes first. The passive adrenaline rush and sadism have a dynamic recovery n numbers to their tooltip. And what that means is it will actually show how much you will heal per, I think, a second or per five. I don't know how they're going to do it. Usually it's per second, like with the Garens. So you can just see how much you'll heal before using or while it's being used, the passive that is. Uh, his Q Infective Cleaver now refunds 100% of the health cost on killing blows. He used to only refund half of that. So this will help his early laning phase, allow him to see us from range in a bad matchup. I think I, I like this. I, I actually like Mundo. Uh, his early laning phase is really the main problem. If he can get past that, get some items, he's, he's a terror in team fights because of just how unkillable he is. He doesn't quite provide the CC of some of these other tanks, but he's just really annoying and just hard to kill, especially now. I haven't seen, I'm actually surprised I haven't seen any Cinder Hulk top lane, uh, Mundo. I understand he's really weak in the early game, so probably you need Flash, but I'm interested to see, to see if people will start playing him in competitive. Uh, it might be a viable choice, but we'll see. Graves, Buckshot deals less damage at max range, slightly more damage at close range. So we'll just look through this. Graves has been a good laner for for some time. Um, right now, I think he's worse than he used to be. He, especially in competitive, that is, uh, because of how tanks are becoming better. And with burst champions like Graves, if you can't kill them instantly, then you're kind of in trouble, especially for a short range champion like Graves. So they reduce the damage at level five by twenty, reduce the AD ratio by 0.05 but increase the bonus damage per bullet by 10%. So I don't like this because of how Graves has to deal with the tank meta now, and it's very difficult for him. He's still a really good laner, especially in, uh, actually just in general. doesn't matter if it's solo queue or competitive, but he falls off a lot in competitive. Um, so just to compensate, they did this, but honestly, it means nothing. At early ranks, it's 12 more damage. Uh, and uh, you're very rarely gonna get a three buckshot Q. Um, look at the look at the difference. There's no difference in the base damage at level five, and a 0 0.06 bonus attack damage ratio for hitting three of them. So it's a nerf. So this is just trying to cover it up, I guess. Uh, the writer is also trying to cover up the fact that really you don't get that much of an increase in damage if you hit the rate compared to before so this is a nerf to him period i don't think it was needed he was becoming weaker and weaker because of the tank meta but whatever uh jinx super mega death rockets close range damage has been severely reduced again another change i don't think was needed uh though jinx is fairly good in this new meta because of how she's a hyper carry uh she has very clear weaknesses mainly her mobility um any champion who doesn't have a gap, like a, a f instant gap closer or escape is it's very hard to play unless you have a team around you. And that wasn't what made Jinx, this, this is not what made Jinx strong. This, like, this won't, this change won't change the fact that she might snowball in a team fight. So this just changes her damage at very close ranges. It makes her base damage is really weak. So you have to rely on them being very low. So the execute damage is what you're going to be relying on. This this is well, this will not do anything. Um, uh, basically, if they're really close and they're not maybe below a certain threshold, then it won't work. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, let me see. Yeah, it will still be the same at longer ranges, but I don't think this was necessary. She's very hard to play uh, without a team around you. So. That's my opinion, though. Kazakh. So a few buffs to his... Oh, okay, so for, to the heal amount in the jungle. So since the new jungle, um, a lot of damage-focused champions have fallen off, especially with the Cinder Hulk changes. Uh, Kazakh especially because his damage got nerfed and his heal, I think, got nerfed as well. Or maybe this heal was always low, uh, but people stop, stopped, like ranking out past three and so the damage was low and then the heal was low as well so it, it didn't really matter 
what you did, uh, especially with this tank meta. It's too hard to kill them, and you got outscaled really hard. I don't think this will change it. This will just help his early game a little. Since L Elder Lizard was the way he kind of healed along with his W, it used to be very efficient because he needed the mana, and he gave him health as well along with his heal of his W. So I guess this is trying to compensate, but I don't know. I don't think it was uh, it'll help him. Would see this? Uh, yeah, we'll see though. Uh, Mordecai's Durb. Creeping Death is now able to be casted without stopping. So how kind of Nunu's W is casted? They're similar in how they both give it to you and the allied champion or the minion, whatever. Uh, so it's just the same way. Makes it more in line with Nunu's. And also they both have gotten this new feature and now automatically targets the nearest allied champion if self-cast. So you're kind of forced into using it on someone else, which is fine. You should be using it on someone else anyway because it's it doesn't have any added costs to it. So whatever, not a big change. Uh, it just kind of forces you into that, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, but Nunu also got a nerf to his overall health. And the reason for that is because Cinderhulk with his Q passive on, I think it was blue buff, small minion for blue buff, red buff, and small minion for red buff. They would give you 10% extra health. I think it's bonus health or max health. One of those. It's still very well. It synergizes very well with Cinder Hulk with the 25% extra bonus health. So six extra, six less health at each level. So that's how much less health he's going to have, which, which hurts, especially since it multiplies by 25.25. Plus 108, and then more with his how uh, his uh, Q passive works. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. It's gonna hurt his overall health. Uh, he gets very tanky in the late game with those two passives. So I think it's okay, but I think Cinder Hulk is actually what needed to be nerfed, not Nunu. So Pantheon got a change similar to what Rek'Sai has, and uh, I think Twisted Fate has on their ultimates, where it has an on my way ping when he's committing to ulting. Uh, just a nice change. I think it's a good, good, just to make everything more consistent. So yeah, nothing else to really talk about. That's nice. Uh, Shen is a better bodyguard, but still not that great at being a ninja. Yeah, it's funny how he's a tank and he's the champion that looks most like a ninja, in my opinion. Whatever though, uh, that's not, has nothing to do with the game. In uh, actual mechanics or whatever. So Stan United now places Shen between his target and the closest visible enemy champion. So this is actually really important because sometimes when you ulted on your ally, it would put you on the other side and it would be actually hard to reach the enemy champion with the taunt if they're moving away from you. So that, that was a problem. So this makes it even easier to do that. And I think Shen is actually in a good place right now, especially for solo queue. I don't know about competitive just yet, but I think he's really good in solo queue simply because you can... Uh, grab cinder hulk and you don't need teleport in my opinion you don't need teleport especially in solo queue because most people do not use teleport or lane swap pre-6 uh, and since you have your ultimate at six you can just use that and get an offensive summoner along with smite either flash or maybe maybe ignite it depends what people want people can go teleport but i don't think it's necessary uh, I think his flash initiates can actually be quite good. So I think Shen's actually in a good place, especially with the buff to his CDR, to his ultimate before uh, this patch. He's actually quite strong. I think people need to just look at him and see his uh, potential. Cyan got a nerf to his W. So the detonation timer is no longer two seconds. It's now three seconds. This is actually what it used to be back when... Cyan used to be played more AP. It took a little while for him to actually detonate, so you have to charge it up, wait, and then uh, break it. So it, it gives more counterplay and allows you more time to break a shield before it can actually pop it on you, which is okay. I think that's fine. Uh, but I think Cyan's actually kind of... He's not that lane bully that he used to be, like an immovable tank that could just like spam E at you, roar minions at you. Uh, the damage was nerfed and the mana cost was nerfed, so... After that change, I think he was in a good good place. Uh, so I don't think this change was needed, especially since he's not seen that much in competitive. Uh, this also really hurts him because this damage nerf, uh, level, so they nerfed it by 4% at level 1. 
it hurts them because you usually, at least what I've seen, is you put three points in E for that early harass and wave clear, and then you max Q or something along those lines. W is usually maxed later because of the mana cost is actually quite high from what I remember. Let's check real quick. One moment, guys. So let's check the mana costs. So 45 mana. So yeah, 65. It is a higher mana cost than both of his abilities, especially at early levels. And if you max it, 85 or early is very bad. So this hurts him in that sense. Um, trying to think because of the new Black Cleaver, there's a lot of champions I'm trying to think of that would benefit from uh, from the change. Uh, I think Scion might be one of them. Maybe unless people are still gonna go full tank, but I think the how good the new Black Cleaver is going to be might help people like Scion and mainly Bruisers, but we'll just talk about that when we get there. But I don't think this change was needed, to be honest. Uh, Twitch. So this is a change, a bug that, I don't know if it was a bug or it was meant to be like this. It, I've heard mixed accounts, uh, but he used to not be able to hit inhibitors and Nexus, Nexi, whatever, a Nexus. <laughs> when he ulted uh, and the reason people would do this would be like some certain like very small scenarios where he would try to backdoor with his ultimate with more damage uh, and it just it wouldn't work I think it was because it was coded as a projectile instead of like an actual auto attack so it didn't hit it but it also hit towers at the same time which is kind of weird so the interaction was I don't know what was going on there but I guess they changed it so whatever it's, it's a good change needed uh, Warwick fixed a bug where it could take Warwick up to two seconds to detect low health enemies with blood scent. Um, I think this is the bug that would occur when you deactivated and activated Warwick's blood scent when you got closer to an enemy. And it would just take a while to actually activate, uh, even though you've already pressed it down for a little while. And I don't know, it was just like a weird thing that has always been around and I don't know why it was like I usually use it when like so let's say you're ganking a top laner who's really low you turn it off so they don't know you're there once you get close enough you turn it back on but it doesn't activate immediately so that was a pain I don't think this will change Warwick's uh position in the game he's been he nerfed they got he got nerfed I think it was when challenging smite was really strong and devourer was a thing I don't know if devourer got nerfed as well but Warwick is just in a bad place that like too many of the things that made him good in the early season just got nerfed and I think they hit him too hard. Um, we'll see though. Maybe in the next patch they'll do something. I'm still waiting for the rework though. That's been in, in the works for a while so maybe they're gearing up for that later. I don't know. Xerath, we tried to fix this earlier but okay. So this is a bug where if Xerath used his alt and then you press it again really quickly because maybe if you're in a rush to spam your alt and get it off it would shoot on top of himself uh, which is interesting that sounds like something like that would happen in dota where if you double cast something it would either cast it on yourself or at fountain i think it was but i don't know which is interesting um but yeah they fixed the bug needed good change yasuo um so they buffed yasuo's shield f by 40 at all levels this is mainly important in the early game because 60 to 40 is a pretty big increase but i think the weakness of a shield is that it only lasts a second so they might hit you so like especially against range champions they would auto you when your passive would be up and they would back up and then uh, or, or just like wait for it to go off and then they would hit you hard so that was the weakness of it uh, after it was nerfed from two seconds i think to one second it's not as effective in lane. Um, I think they nerfed Yasuo too hard. He he kind of was put into that scenario where like champions like Elise and Evelyn were, where they just they were really strong and rightfully nerfed in my opinion because they were just too dominant and they gave no chance for other mid laners to come in. But they just kept doing it over and over without giving the champion time to like get settled into their new spot. Yasuo was nerfed quite a lot and. I don't know if, I, I think his Q was the only ability that wasn't nerfed. Everything about him was nerfed. So uh, this won't change it, I don't think. Even even with, I don't even know why this was put here. 
if you're trying to make his early landing phase a little stronger, why would you do this? So I don't know. Don't ask me. Um, won't change anything. I'll be honest. Won't change anything. Uh, mass texture rebalance is just textures that they've updated and will keep updating. It's good changes. And finally, black cleaver. And the thing that I think will dominate the game for the next week or so, however long it takes to nerf this thing, because I think it is very powerful. For one reason, because it builds out a phage, and phage is a good item. It just doesn't build into many items. It only built into Triforce after, uh, what was it? Frozen Mal got changed. Um, so yeah, so this gives you the early rage passive right here. And Kindle Gem is a good item, but it doesn't build into many like offensive bruisery items, which Black Cleaver now does. Uh, gold unchanged, so that's fine. Build Path is, in my opinion, a little better. It makes it a little less offensive in the early game, because Brutalizer used to be really good in the early game, and you just get that extra early damage on champions. Like, well, any any damage champion, really, uh, Zed, all those champions. Uh, but yeah, Garen. I'm really thinking about Garen when I'm looking at this item and like bruisers. So just think about that when uh, you're thinking about this. So early game damage weaker, a little more defensive, and just overall better utility because you get that movement speed. Armor penetration is removed because there's no brutalizer anymore. The health was doubled, 400 health, very good. Less AD, so again, less armor pen. Actually, no armor pen. Less AD. Double CDR and double HP. Holy crap! This this item is extremely cost effective. I think the only items in the game that give you 20% CDR are items that you get like mana stats with so mana regen except for i think nasher's tooth i could be wrong i would have to look through the the whole game and see maybe zeke's i think zeke's how much does zeke's give let's check real quick sorry i had this open zeke's herald it might give 20 percent yeah so it gives 20 percent, but the health on it is not that great especially for the cost and uh, it's not, it's just like a team item. It's just too expensive for what it gives you. Uh, so for top laners, you don't really want to get this. So this will give you another, I don't know, choice. Uh, like, especially on, G I'm looking at Garen because he doesn't like Frozen Heart. He doesn't like any mana region items. He's not going to get a Nasher's Tooth unless you're going AP Garen and like full on trolling your team, which, I, whatever, you can do whatever you want, man. But this is just something that I think will make him really strong champions like Darius make a lot of bruisers come back into the game uh this is just something one just one of the changes along with the health along with the rage passive very good on bruisers just overall the shred duration is already also increased armor shred max stacks is also increased 30% armor reduction keep that in mind let's compare the two this is why i this is just something i do when i'm looking at cost efficiency of items just compare similar items Black Cleaver, and Last Whisper. The difference in cost is 700. Last Whisper is a better item because you get that 35% armor penetration for yourself immediately. You don't have to wait for the shred to go through to get that full damage out of it. This AD is the same, so you have to look at this, this stat right here. This is overall better immediately. 35% also is better than 30% after a certain amount of time. Let's so keep that in mind. This will be better against, like, champions that will take a while and then once they get to that certain point they will just absolutely crush you um i think this will actually be a viable damage item on certain 80 carries um maybe in the late game maybe in the early game i'm trying to think because kogma really likes the rage passive this rage passive is actually really underrated even on like 80 carries because they have really low movement speed this will help them and the 30 percent armor reduction is almost as good as the 30% or 35% armor penetration and it actually also helps your team. So that's a possible thing to do uh, for AD carries in my opinion. Also you get the 400 health, very underrated on AD carries with such small health pools and uh, it gives you that 20% CDR which is very underrated. I can't believe, okay, how many items as an AD carry will you get for CDR? There's Ghost Blade and that's a mid game item. It's okay. Uh, 
I just, I really don't like this. I understand you can spike with it, but then after the late game, it's not as great. You, can, you mainly use it for the steroid the, that it gives you, but after a while, it's not as great. So we'll give them another ability to use, or another item to get as a possibility. I'm not saying this is the be-all, end-all, but it also gives you the health, uh, same AD, CDR, which is underrated for like steroid abilities, so you can have them up more often. So I think it's just something that AD carries will have to look at and try to consider. Uh, mostly for bruisers, bruisers are going to come back 100%. I know they will. Um, I don't know about competitive, but solo queue for sure. Recurve bow has a different build path now. It has it, sorry, it it's no longer just a base item. It's now builds out of two daggers and 200 gold. Total cost increased by 200, but also gets 10 physical damage on hit. So this is on hit. Keep that in mind, as opposed to like a long sword, which gives you the on hit as well as uh, how do I say this? Like AD ratio abilities also scale off of it. So it doesn't actually give you AD, it gives you the damage on hit, which is nice. Uh, if you're an auto attack champion, this is actually just better uh, cost efficiency wise. 200 gold for 10 damage is really good. Keep that in mind. Um, it also builds into Blade of the Rune King now. So uh, the build up to it is a little better, I would say. Um, so you get the Bilge Water and the Recurve Bow. You can just build two daggers into the Recurve Bow. And then the 700 gold, which is slightly lower than the 900 gold that it used to be. So I think this is actually better. Um, also, you have to keep in mind that the on hit passive also benefits from lifesteal now. This is what I thought it always did, and uh, it would make sense if it did, uh, because it's still damage that you're doing. Uh, but I guess they didn't include the item damage. This is the percentage damage that Blade of the Rune King does. Keep that in mind. Now it does. I think this was because of how people <laughs> were looking at how. You can hit a tank with thorn mail at like six items, double life steal them sometimes. Uh, you can like do a bunch of combinations, and you still can't kill them, and they would kill you before you killed them, and they wouldn't touch you. So it was interesting to see. I don't think it was the greatest of arguments because you have to keep in mind that you have a support helping you, and the diver has to deal with a lot of other things that come his way, like AP damage and other things like that. But this actually helps them a lot. Keep it's it's. It's so underrated how much how good this is. Key, uh, put this in combination with uh, Bloodthirster, double life steal. You get the twenty uh, percent extra life steal from Bloodthirster, which is huge, along with the on hit passive. It's gonna be really good. Um, they also added the minimum damage up to ten. I think this is only on creeps that you have to worry about, but okay, I guess so. Interesting. <laughs> But whatever, it's a nice change. Uh, AD carries are going to be in a good place, in my opinion. A blade is going to be like required, though. Which I don't like, but that's what you get when you have tanks that are so good now. Runan's Hurricane, when you actually look at this item build, and uh, it looks pretty cool. So basically, it's just... <laughs> it's funny if you look at it. It's just a dagger, and then there's... Uh, what is it? Shoot. Recurve Bow, which builds out of two daggers, and then another dagger. That's basically what Hur Runan's Hurricane is built out of, which is funny. The combined cost is reduced, but the total cost is increased by 100. And the reason for that is because it gives this. So 100 for this is actually pretty good. It gives just a little bit extra damage on the, I think the main guy hit. Secondary bolts damage remain unchanged. So slight buff to Runans, but not a big deal. What's end? Uh, the combined cost got changed because uh, Reaker Bow is slightly more expensive. So, but the build path to it is better. Still, still think this is too. I don't know. It's too like situational. You need to have like auto attack based top laners or jungle champions or whatever to make full use of this. And ever since it was n the cost of it was increased, I think it was like twenty four hundred at one point. It hasn't really come back, which makes me sad. Uh, I think it's a good item actually. Gives you quite a lot of magic resist once you get the full stacks of it. And reduces a lot of magic with itself. Like champions like Warwick still benefit from it. Whatever. Uh, Devourer also has got changed. Uh, it's just, again, the build path. Same with what's end. The change, the gold cost of it did not change. So, no big difference. Righteous Glory. We went a little bit overboard with this last time. But we're tuning it back just a tiny bit. So the patch in which Righteous Glory was buffed 
I don't know if it was 550 to 650 or 600 to 650, uh, but it was the time when Cinder Hulk also came out, which made me really worried. This item in of itself was already really good. Reason for that was because it built out a catalyst, gave great initiate, gave you mana, all that good stuff, and a lot of health. And then they buffed it. At the same time that they, that they introduced Hits in their Hulk. That is asking to have trouble in this game. Like You're setting tanks up to be too powerful immediately. You have to build it up slower, which is how I see balance should be. It's slower change. Not just buffing tanks like to insanity, which they did without being cautious. But I guess it's just it's a little balance that they have to work with uh, within their own system. But I think they've gotten better over time, so I can't I can complain. Um, but yeah, I'm glad this is back to where it used to be. It wasn't needed the buff that is. Summoners rift changes dragons might. This is the dragon buff number one used to calculate AD in a funky way. The way they explain it is really weird. I don't know why it would ever be calculated this way. So it would not calculate the bonus AD you have. So it would only calculate how much bonus AD you got from the buff based on your base AD. That's what it sounded like at least. So you guys can read this if you want as well. It's at the bottom uh, near the Summoner's Rift area of the patch notes. Um, so I assume you have 1.0 AD ratio for anything that uses an AD ratio. So weird. I don't understand. I don't know why they just don't take your total AD, multiply that by 0 0.06, and add that on to your AD. That's it. I don't know though. Uh, maybe I'm not a mathematician and I'm just talking on my ass. Whatever. But I think that's all that I really want to talk about. There also are some changes to ARAM and Howling Abyss. So if you guys want to take a look at that, I would just look at this yourself. But uh, that should be it for me. Uh, guys like this i tried to be a little more concise but to be honest there were just so many changes this patch and like the black cleaver and the rise ones are really important to talk about because of how they will change the game i think rise will make a comeback um i have to see how it's used in practice and how good people are going to be at him because he is a skill shot champion now but i think it'll be interesting um i not always a fan of rise but we'll see <laughs> Maybe he'll be more fun. Um, but thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you like this. Uh, make sure to look out for these in the future. I know these are long, but I always put a timeline link in the bottom below. In the description below, sorry. So you guys uh, can get a concise feel for what you want to see. And uh, that should be it. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.